Hello, everybody. Welcome into the Armchair Sports YouTube channel. I am your host, Steel Badker, and with me again today is Warchild. How's it going? Man, it's going. I cannot wait. We are at Wednesday. Today we are recording on Wednesday. Hopefully we'll get this up later on tonight. Maybe the worst case tomorrow. Uh, I Saturday can't come fast enough. Yep, just another exciting <laughs> weekend of stuff. This one very different than the last because... Uh, at least how I always view it, it's a lot of guys that's like, you know, no one likes this guy, but I really like this guy. <laughs> so I'm going to I'm gonna look really smart when this works out. Or I'm going to be the guy who drafted Jason Poe and he didn't make the team. And now I'm just hoping he's in Madden so I can play him at fullback, you know? <laughs> you know what I'm really excited about? The fact that, like, this year I've prepared so much for the draft. Last year I prepared, but, like, this year I've prepared to the point where, like, I don't think I'm going to run out of steam. For the last couple of picks last year, I was just like, who's the next guy that Dane Brugler likes? <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, there's, like, so, based on, you and I have had, and I think we will do a segment on this after the draft, talking about our processes, because you guys definitely went, uh, deeper than I did as far as you know actually scouting these players my system's a little more like a hybrid between not scouting at all and <laughs> scouting everybody uh, so just because I uh, spent too much time doing discord stuff that I don't scout as much um, but uh, so I have sort of a kind of weird uh, relationship with a lot of these guys because there are some that like I picked out as like okay, this is the guy I'm going to watch, and then I'll either, like, have, like, a strong take either way. And a lot of guys that I've just kind of, like, listened to a bunch of people talk about them to get an idea of who they are. Um, and then they just either didn't trigger me enough to, like, watch them off that. Like, listen, I feel, you know, everybody's saying the same thing. So I, at this point, I feel comfortable enough just, to, you know, saying that's what it is. Or... Um, I just didn't need the position. It's like, oh, this player's had a lot of different things to say. He sounds intriguing, but I just can't draft another guard, you know? <laughs> like, I, I drafted Tittman already to play into your offensive line. I've got a full room now, so I, I, can't, I can't draft another one because I just won't be able to roster him. I can't, I can't roster six guards <laughs> like, or six and two offensive linemen. I can't do it. Believe it or not, this is legitimately a conversation that we've had before we went into the draft, uh, me and Johnny, was the idea that, like, well, just how many people can we draft? Like, so, can, actually, we, we've talked about that a lot recently. And so it's a lot of, like, how many of this position are you going to roster? Mm. And, like, what is it stacking up like? And that changes with where your guys get drafted in real life and how they end up getting rated, of course. But, like, yeah, that's, that's the toughest part of the day three stuff. For me, it's just like exactly how many guys can I draft and then reasonably expect to not lose to you for claiming them. Thank you, Jay. For, Thank you, Jason Pinnock. Brothers always claim people. You guys claim my tight end from last year. Am I, Ar Armani Rogers. Yeah, guys. You're not getting him back. I know. I know. It's going to be so tough if he ends up being good, too, because it's just, like, I knew it, but I just, he was not in the game. Like, <laughs> he wasn't in the game. He just claimed him. <laughs> but yeah, I was safe. <laughs> I, you, he didn't accumulate stats. I actually did watch him play because for the first couple of weeks or so, especially uh, right after preseason, the, the commies had some real problems with, like, their depth at tight end. So he did play a little bit. Yeah, yeah, he played, and, like, looked, I mean, reasonably part for a, you know, convert from quarterback, and they, I, when they drafted him, I was excited because they've done the quarterback convert thing before, and it's worked out pretty well. Yeah. So. I'm, uh, I'm really hoping that you live to regret that. Yeah, I mean, realistically, I'm not going to regret it because there really wasn't another choice. Mm -hmm. Like, I couldn't, I, I was trying to win games. I can't have a guy on my roster that doesn't exist. Yeah, we but, from not doing much of that. So that's just kind of, it is what it is. And I, if I were a rebuilding team, mm -hmm. I would 100% do the same sort of thing. Yeah. Or even like in flux, like I can't fault you. Mm -hmm. I just hate, I just hate you for it. So that's just what it is. <laughs> oh. I drink but let's your get tears. Here. Yes, exactly. You do what it is. So uh, we're going to try to sort of be a, a little more concise last time. We'll see if we actually do it. Um, but first up, quarterbacks. And this is uh, one of the things that I have a take on. 
Uh, yes. We did talk about him in the first bit because I just didn't want anybody to take him. But Tanner McKee, mm-hmm. you're drafting back of quarterbacks in this range. Yeah. And there is certainly a world where you can get a Tanner McKee insanity run as a backup. And that's all you're looking for. He is at least – so I watched a lot of Michael Wilson because I liked him. Um, and he just threw like – what felt like an infinite number of jump balls to Michael Wilson. And while that isn't exactly a glowing <laughs> endorsement of your quarterback, he is poised in the pocket, confident with a pre-snap decision, which I don't think is always horrible. Like, I think he makes reasonably fine pre-snap decisions. He doesn't really change the post-snap, but that's back of quarterback thing. And then I think he puts it relatively well in a spot where the receiver can get it, and it isn't a guaranteed turnover. That is basically what I would hope for in a backup quarterback that isn't crazy athletic. So I think he is a decent draft pick for a team that does need a backup quarterback uh, kind of in this round. Somebody just to hopefully come in and, you know, hell, listen, my quarterback's hurt for three games. Can you, like, win us one maybe with, like, a 300-yard, two-touchdown a pick game? I think he can do it. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and take your 10 number key. I'm going to raise you a Dorian Thompson Robinson. Now, if you desperately wanted Anthony Richardson, but you're also clipping coupons, except no substitute. Dorian Thompson Robinson, uh, they, I don't know if you remember in the combine, but they were like, um, I remember this really clearly. They were testing quarterback arm strength, and like Mm -hmm. CJ Stroud got up to like 63, 64, something like that. Uh, Anthony Richardson got up to 63, 64, something like that. And then Dorian Thompson Robin hit, Robinson hit 67 on the gun. Absolute yep. piss missile of an arm. Um, he didn't run at the combine, combine I don't think. <clears throat> but this is a sub 4, 5, 40 uh, type athlete. Um, regularly uh, was just taking quarterback keepers in for touchdowns uh, last year for UCLA. Now, there's going to be moments where he cannot hit the broadside of a barn, but supposedly he's a light convert to playing football full-time. There's a lot of people that I respect that believe that he has upside if you give him a couple of years. And where he's going to get drafted in the real world is going to give him that opportunity. He's not going to get forced in in year two or year three to have to start. But if he goes to the right team, gets the opportunity to sit for a couple of years, works on his mechanics without being pressured like Michael, like, uh, sorry, Zach Wilson, uh, you might put yourself in a, you might actually end up with like a a starter at the end of it. I don't want to say Geno Smith because Geno Smith was an incredibly accurate quarterback in college like freakishly accurate in college well over 70 something percent and people were wondering like is this the best quarterback in the draft the year he slipped to the second round but you know Seneca Wallace question mark I don't know yeah but yeah um he ran a four five six that is probably pro day um but according to his RAS card so but that's right in the range that's a 97th percentile quarterback run so that's still up there yeah that is that's impressive uh crazy good athlete good leader um yeah i i i found myself oftentimes like being disappointed by his accuracy but then again like he was throwing the jake bobo and the number of times i watched jake bobo drop passes like we'll get (laughs) into that meme a little bit later on um any other quarterbacks you want to bring up but I just want Thompson Robinson. I think's played four years too. Like I think he's started since he was a true freshman. Like I think he's just been balling. So I think he's played a lot of football there. As as far as I can remember, he's been the quarterback at UCLA. So um, because I think he was the guy that as a freshman they were like, you know, he was just thrown in the Pac-12, was playing all right, and like, hey, this guy's fun. Hmm. Uh, but uh, let's move on. Running okay. back. Uh, for some of these, I'm going to start with just like a, the highest Raz guy, okay. um, just because. It's just this is the round where you start swinging on those guys. But this is a guy who a lot of boards would have him much higher than past 100. Uh, Chase Brown just did a pro day run um, because he's recovering from ACL injury, I think he had. Was it an ACL? I saw the thing about it today. 
Um, but I forgot what it was. But we're in a four four three forty. Uh, forty inch vert, ten seven broad. I mean, that's legitimately elite numbers. Um, for him, he didn't do the agilities. He is still recovering from the injuries, so there's some you know real cool running backs getting injuries is always going to be kind of a red flag. But uh, I mean, size wise, nearly two hundred ten pounds, but he's shorter, so the BMI stuff looks good. Uh, I think he's a very interesting running back um, uh, for teams. Probably would be my best available uh, running back too, uh, did, but just crazy did, athlete. Did you get the chance to watch him at all? Yeah, I watched him a bit. Uh, I didn't scout the running backs too heavily because I really don't actually need running back at all. Okay. But uh, all right. I thought he was all right, what I saw. He is an extremely explosive running back. In terms of, I mean, he was consistently like either getting two yards, three yards, four yards, or 40. Um, absolutely will make a, per, uh, make, a, make a linebacker miss in the hole. Uh, is very capable of taking it. Uh, taking into the house on almost every run. Very elusive. Uh, he struggled when anyone got a hand on him, though. Uh, did not play well through contact. But that's, like, there's a lot of running backs in the NFL right now that are those home run hitters. I think, like, off the top of my head, like, Arahi Moster. And if he ends up in a system similar to that San Francisco system, the Miami Dolphins system, where like it's just one cut and go, uh, this is a guy that could be the be the lead of a rotation. I think um, he's not a true three down back. His 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 hands aren't like incredible, but like you could do a lot worse at this time of the draft. There's a lot of backs today. I mean, in this whole draft, that are definitely can play a role. Mm-hmm. in a committee um and yeah chase brown the athleticism alone you can put him on the field and expect him to do much i liked his vision and what i saw mm-hmm. and listen crazy athlete good vision you're gonna be able to be a successful back uh, so the injury concern is why he's still here but at this point i mean fourth round pick i think you'd be happy with what you get let's go ahead and transfer on to uh roshan johnson uh probably mm-hmm. the premier power back uh, left available. Um, it's got reasonable hands, uh, decent top end speed. Not incredible, not bad. Uh, people nig running backs that run sub or run uh, like above four or five, but like realistically, the number of times that a running back has to run that far that fast isn't really especially like relevant. Um, I watched one thing that was fascinating about him uh, when I watched his tape for me was that uh, because he wasn't the lead back. They had him in two-back situations, and he played fullback a lot. Yep. Back in the day, I don't know if you remember this, but back in the day, fullbacks used to be bigger running backs converted to fullback. You'd have your Mike Allstotts, you'd have your... I'm trying to think of the one for Richardson from... Uh, that used to block for Priest Holmes in Kansas City. Oh, uh... You know who I'm talking about, though, right? Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Wasn't uh, uh, wasn't Lorenzo Neal also a converted running back? Lorenzo or... Neal was a converted running back. Richie Anderson was a converted running back. Gerald uh, Soule was a converted running back. Didn't to- so I feel like a more recent one. I feel like uh, uh, was it Pey- uh, Turner Pey- Peyton Hillis? There was another uh, Chargers guy um, that I think did the same sort of thing. He ended up going to Atlanta. Uh, oh, Turner, you're thinking about maybe? Turner? Yeah, Turner the Burner. Yeah, I think I think he also played. Fullback he was a he was a halfback and he was a halfback at Northern Illinois. Transfer or moved him over to fullback because they had LT, but he still fucking lit it up as a fullback. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. So yeah, another mm-hmm. basically same kind of thing. I feel like he's probably one of the more recent examples of this mm-hmm. uh, phenomenon. But, but, but for yeah. some reason, over the last 10, 12 years or so, they've just like taken bigger like uh, tight ends to do the job. But tight ends don't read the field as well. They don't read runs as well as fullbacks, and because they don't really know what to look for like as uh, uh, because they were never running backs I don't think that they block as well and like if you're the fourth or fifth round and you want to pick yourself up a fullback that can pick up some extra yards have some depth as a running back as well this is Roshan Johnson territory he was a very nice looking fullback so I would I was there were some thoughts that were that were going on in the New York Jets uh the New York Jets Discord, where we were considering, hey, look, maybe Roshan Johnson, if you wanted to make it to us at a reasonable spot, because 
we already got the hat back in Breeze Hall, but you know, then again, we also just took uh, Adam Akanda. Who's yeah, I mean, so I want to say Roshan. So we talked about the you know quickness and stuff being a thing. Yes, he has a 90th percentile 10 yard split. Yeah. So you're not expecting him to hit a bunch of home runs, but he is certainly going to be very good at getting to the hole quickly and getting to the first 10 yards. And at that point, I mean, you're asking him to get five yards of carry. It really, you're asking him to probably get two yards on a third and one. So he is going to get there very quickly, and he is very big to do so. Mm-hmm. Um, but then also, uh, so Roshan, his Raz as a fullback, 8.58. Nice. Elite speed. Nice. Good explosiveness. Just a little small for a fullback, but because a lot of those guys are not tight ends. But yeah, if we're talking about uh, one of the running back type of guys, I feel like he would have stood up well back in the early 2000s for those dudes. And obviously, if you are expecting him to block a lot more, you can ask him to put on 15 pounds. For sure. And hope that he doesn't uh, lose so much explosion, yeah. But yeah, uh, I, you know, Roshan uh, certainly has uh, great tape for exactly the role he's going to play in the NFL, which is not common. Usually these guys just do everything and are the stud of the team. You've seen him be exactly what he's going to be on Sundays. Mm-hmm. A rotational piece that can pick you up some extra yards, maybe break off one for 2025, block for your other running back. Like, I mean, he's no Deuce Vaughn, but he's something. Yeah, I mean, he's probably the second best power back in the class of Deuce Vaughn. So. Yeah. Uh, speaking of that, do you want to go ahead and bring up Deuce? Yeah, might as well. Bring up our guy here. But yeah, um, just, I mean, we're talking about the running back fullbacks, right? Why not get the guy they don't even see coming? Just a mean blocker they can't even see. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell our listeners a little bit about who Deuce Vaughn is. So, like, we, I feel like to a certain extent we kind of feel like a parody of him, right? Like, oh, look at Deuce Vaughn, but like, I legitimately think he is a very good role playing back for the the kind of system that like I think Darren Sproles a lot more explosive than him. So we're not talking about a guy who's going to make the big plays as Sproles does, but like in the receiving game, I think he is very difficult to bring down an open field. Some of that is his size, right? It's a very small hitbox to hit, but like. From that, and he's very willing in the tackles, like, there is certainly a productive third down back in there for your team. And he's a willing blocker. Again, some of this is size is going to limit this, but, like, if you're talking about, like, a day, you know, a late day three pick, like, I think that he could be a productive player for you in a somewhat limited role, but a lot of running backs are limited role nowadays. So I think he fits. See, when I, when I saw him start catching passes, I originally, I immediately thought of, like, Tariq Cohen, who... Ironically, he's bigger, but still. Um, I'm To be honest with you, he also weighed in at 179 pounds. I'm positive he didn't play at 179 pounds, and I would not, would not be surprised at all if he added some bad weight, lost some of his explosion, and that's why he didn't test amazingly. Oh, for sure. Uh, he looked cl- a lot closer to like 165 than 179. Uh, I, th- I would have expected this 10-yard split, this shuttle, this three-cone to all be significantly uh, more explosive. He's much more explosive than he tested, at least on tape. Uh, so Deuce, uh, he reminded me a lot of Tariq Cohen, very much uh, able to make people miss in open space. He struggled a lot uh, in terms of like breaking tackles. I, I hardly can recall a time when he actually like did break a tackle at the line of scrimmage. But like in the open field, Deuce just couldn't put a hand on him. Like, no joke, he would make people miss in a phone booth. It was really, really impressive stuff. Uh, he had no problem being decisive at the line um, in traffic. When you got him out in space, he just did some electric stuff, dude. He was so much fun to watch. Um, and then, you you know, he did throw a block or two. When he threw a block, he put his whole body into it. I respect it. I absolutely respect the hustle. Yeah, I mean, he, he knows that he can't, you know, pull back at all. Mm-hmm. So, he's not in... The limiting of his upside is as Walker is not going to be his heart. It's just going to be his size. And, like, at that point, you're still getting a guy who's going to get in the way. If, you, if you're getting him for, you know, 6th, 7th round or so, you're, you're expecting to get him 5 or five, eight touches a game, like, he might rip you off something. He might, he might, he might do something pretty special for you. For sure. 
Um, and another one back you want to take a look at? Because uh, there's a few more that I want to bring up. Yeah, sure. Let's bring a couple more. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about my boy Dwayne McBride. Still on the board here. I don't believe he should still be on the board. I think a couple of running backs went ahead of him that maybe, you know, people might regret. Uh, absolute just, just a rumble tumble. Nick Chubb E type running back. Uh, doesn't maybe have that same top end speed that Nick Chubb, Chubb Nick Chubb does, but like really good in the hole, makes people miss. Gonna break a tackle. Uh, don't disrespect him and try to arm tackle him, dude. You gotta put your whole body through it. Bring both arms so when you're coming. Uh, he will hit you hard. Uh, ton of fun to watch his tape. Um, he played at the University of Alabama, Birmingham. Not always the best quality of uh, competition, but like I also don't want to think that. I would not disrespect that level of competition as well. Um, I always hear people talk about, well, where did he, who did he play against? But like, we routinely see guys coming out of those smaller universities compete in the NFL. So like, just because he made you know guys at Northern Iowa fall down, like, does it mean he's not going to make guys in the NFL fall down? So. That's Dwayne McBride. Uh, Keaton Mitchell, he's another one of those uh, absolute monster speedbacks. Uh, out of one of the Carolinas? What is it? Eastern Carolina? Yeah. Keaton Mitchell doesn't look like he's tested. Absolute. Oh, wait. Yeah, he did. Okay. Where was he? Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, run like Ran like a sub four... 440, like four, yeah, 437, 40, uh, one five, 10 yard split. He's small, but like he is what he is. He's gonna, he's gonna hit you the home runs uh, when he gets the ball. A uh, lot of fun. He's you have to think of him basically as like another Devin A Chain type player. A um, little bit smaller than A Chain, but like just incredibly fast. Uh, Daenerys Prince Tulsa, another home run hitter. Um, Prototypical size for a running back. Go ahead and pull up real quick. Nine point five eight RAS, five eleven two sixteen four point four one forty one five three ten yard split. Very decent agility. Very good explosive. Uh, like. He's basically exactly what you're, what you're looking for in terms of the size and profile of a prototypical three down back in the NFL. Uh, very vertical uh, threat, very, very fast. Hands are iffy, but you're, you we're talking about fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round of the draft. Like, if you get a guy like you got in Pacheco last year, sometime in the late rounds, like, you're. It's, that's money. Yep, a lot of these backs, just like you're looking for physical tools and, you know, basically some upside, at least in a roll. Mm -hmm. And Pierce, I mean, or Prince, I mean, with the size and speed combination, like, I mean, at worst, you just got to point him in the right direction, right? Like, <laughs> at worst. And then if he ends up on one of those teams that, I don't know, the Ravens or something like that, they get two injuries, all of a sudden you've got to do that starting midway through the season, and he might not give that running back roll back, just like the Chicago yeah, did. Yeah, a lot of these backs feel further away. Like, oh, you know, I don't know how close they're going to be to transfer, but, like, we've seen a ton of these guys. And Tulsa isn't even really, like, that low of competition compared to some of these guys. But, like, listen, like, you have a guy that runs hard, is, has the size, runs fast. Like, that's enough. If they got the right system going, they can any of them can ball out. Absolutely. Uh, you really are looking – running back is that position where you really are looking for those RAS superstars. Yeah, I mean, all of the, these are the, this is the best of the best athlete position because it's so hard to differentiate yourself. That basically all of the best athletes end up playing it when they're growing up. So, uh, last one I want to point out is Xavier Valade from Arizona State. Um, what you're getting out of Valade is something similar to what you're getting out of like a Daenerys Prince. Where, um, how do I put this exactly? You're getting uh, an incredibly um, explosive prototypical back um, that's, again, maybe not going to 
Like, these are going to be one-cut backs that go in zone systems that if they make a dude miss, they are on their way to the house. Um, Valide, a little bit uh, less than Prince even, uh, doesn't have that power to just bust through tackles. Um, but he's going to be off to the races if you don't touch him in the hole. Uh, he's another... I keep bringing it up, but like these zone running backs, like they end up on the right team, they get the right set of injuries. Like you could be looking at another Raheem Mostert, another like late day three dude that just winds up starting for an NFL team and goes off. For sure. Let's transition wide receivers here. Okay. Uh, top guy, Raz guy. I mean, there's two at the top, but Bryce Ford Wheaton. 997 Raz. Now, I mean, with the, a lot of these guys, the top Raz guys for this year, a lot of them are available. And well, to put it nicely, they're available day three for a reason. But you're taking a chance on traits. Bryce Ford Wheaton ran a 96 percentile 40 yard dash. Like, he is fast. And he is 6'3 and a half, 221. But he's big too. Got long arms. Like he's very explosive, and he's got decent agility. There's no wrong with there's nothing wrong with him physically, but he's here because you've still got a lot of work to do to make him a productive NFL wide receiver. But the physical tools are there for him to be very productive. Same with uh, Eosovas out of Princeton. Yoshias. Landers out of I mean Landers out of Arkansas. Dowell out of Tennessee. Martin. I mean a lot of these guys really high res, great physical tools, but like. Some of them are just, like, level competition, but, like, other of them are just, like, well, we just need to really, like, teach them how to, you know, be a wide receiver. Who is the guy out of uh, Tennessee, Martin? Uh, that is Dowell. Colton Dowell. All right, a 4 4 two. But, I mean, the 10-yard split's a little dicey, um, but great size, great explosiveness. I mean, 41.5-inch vert. Um so more of the long striding uh, type of dude, um, but um, besides RAS, do you have anything? Did you watch any of these guys? Yes, I've watched a few of these guys. Okay. Um, a couple so, of them I'm actually thinking about taking, but there was a name that I wanted to mention because I've seen a lot about him recently, and I watched a lot of this team because I really liked Josh Downs, and that is Antoine Green. I like Antoine Green. Uh, I like I. I mean. To an extent, I don't understand why there is such a huge gap between him and Josh Downs. I like Josh Downs. This doesn't mean, like, disparaging Josh Downs. I thought he should have went a lot higher here. But, like, I mean, not a lot higher, but should have went higher here. But I don't know why Antoine Green, on the, in the same system, you watch in the same game. Obviously, the cutups, you kind of more focus on, the t- obviously, the same side. But, like, you watch it, and you don't think anything about Antoine Green, who I think runs really good routes, has great hands. And... I don't even think he's that bad of an athlete. I haven't looked up his... Uh, let me look it up here quick. No, 8.69 or 8.68 res. Yeah, so like, I think like uh, of these guys... 95th like, put, percentile 10-yard split. Yeah, so that's what I mean. Like, he's got a lot put together here. And this board has him at 401. <laughs> like, And I think consensus has him more like, you know, in the like 180s or so, which is better. But like even then, like... I'm not entirely sure why he wasn't a top 100 player Consensus um, at this draft point. Board, 302. Which one are you looking at? I saw him at 180 once, I'm looking I think. at NFL Mock Draft Database, Consensus hmm. Draft Board. Well, maybe Consensus isn't up on him yet, and I just looked at the wrong thing. And either way, though, it's like, I'm not I'm not sure what I am wrong with him on. But, uh, yeah, I think uh, watching a lot of UNC... And dreaming about having Drake May on my football team next year, uh, I don't, I don't know exactly what was missing in Green's game, but I think, I mean, I, I have a hard time believing that he's going to go undrafted in real life. So that's, I mean, that's the rankings we're talking about here. I have a hard time believing he is not going to get taken day three. Yeah, uh, Green Green definitely popped out uh, a little bit when I went back and watched uh, like uh, Josh Downs. For that exact same reason, like he just—he seems like a professional wide receiver. I don't understand how 
the disparity between... But then again, this draft has been really, really strangely scouted. I've said it from the very beginning. I'm going to keep saying it. Like, I don't understand how the consensus board was, was formed going into this year and how it's still sort of propped up. There are guys that I don't believe should be day two, day three prospects that are, you know, that much worse than the day one guys. I don't get it. Like... Their athletic testing is not much worse. Their physical skills are not worse. Their tape is certainly better. But, you know, consensus is what the consensus is. Yeah, I mean, one there, I guess. But he was a name that I thought was fun. Yeah. Um, well, it'd be, it'd be interesting to see if uh, he ends up going higher um, like, to, here to, or whatever. To, to, to head up on your point, like, guys, like, I think. Like Jalen Hyatt, for example. Like I know that Jalen Hyatt is fast. I know that Jalen Hyatt put up a lot of yards against a lot of teams in a very simplistic system and is a second round pick, but like I don't get why he would be ahead of like an Antoine Green, who caught balls contested significantly better. Uh Quinton Johnson, another one. Michael Wilson, another one. That like I watched Antoine Green and felt like this guy might be better. I'm not sure I agree on the Johnson and Wilson front, uh, Wilson. but it's okay. I, I, I like, I, I didn't hate everything I saw from Wilson, but I do think that he could be in the conversation with uh, Johnson. I liked a, a good bit more than Wilson. Um, but I do think he could be in the conversation with Wilson in that tier. If you told me he was taken before Michael Wilson in day two, I would not bat an eye. I would call it a good pick even if the consensus said otherwise, because I exactly see it and would put him in that like fringe top 100 range um, where a lot of these receivers are ranked that I just could envision taking over him. If yeah, I would go so far as to say if TCU didn't go on the run that they went on, Quinston Johnston would be a day three pick. I mean, I would go farther to say that he was a decent reason why they did end up going on a bit of a run because Duggan's not very good, but... Um, the like, Yak guys have gotten a boost lately. Like, oh, two years ago, he would have been taken in like the late second or something like that, or early third. But like the Yak guys are are, are having their day. Let them have their day. You say so. <laughs> um, I do have one more. Okay. Uh, Dentavian, Dentavian Wicks. Um, I think he got a little bit of a nerf because he didn't run fast in the 40, at least publicly. Because a lot of people will look at the 40 time, but like... I didn't really see him as like an outside deep threat type of guy, which is where I would be concerned with the deep, you know the forty time. His ten yards was great. I saw him as a big slot, six one. You know, I feel like he had he ran. He, I think he run, works decently in the middle of the field from what I saw. Pretty limited scouting on him. Uh, I wasn't really looking for a big slot type because I'd play Thielen there if I was looking for that. Um, but I just watched him a little bit and I came away. I mean, uh, relative to how I looked at a lot of these guys, I feel pretty good about how his testing lines up with what I want him to do. So, big slot type, very quick. I mean, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I mean, like you said, the 10-yard split, excellent. Like, uh, 155, 83rd percentile. Uh, his explosion skills, uh, 92 and 96 percent, both cases, like... I didn't watch him too much, but, like, I get what you're saying. But yeah, that's the unfortunate part of how I do it. It's like, I heard a little about him. Like, oh, I like big slots. I'll watch him a little bit. And that's basically what I saw. And the testing matches what I want him to do. There's Now, I think that he is more justifiably in this range. Like, him being on the board is not an injustice to him. Mm -hmm. I think when you're talking about a big slot that isn't a crazy athlete, especially the agilities, you're definitely not putting them in day two. But here in day three... Like, I mean, we had Auden Tate put up like a like 800 yard five week stretch, and he is like projects to that to a degree, a little smaller, but like, I mean, you could put him in the slot and get him a bunch of yards too. Like, that's the same kind of thing to me. Uh, I would not be surprised if he had a somewhat productive ACFL career for somebody. Fair enough. Um, let me just how uh, let me just shout out some of the midgets here. Um. Charlie Jones, a uh, very traditional sort of slot, a uh, very professional career at Penn, at uh, Purdue rather. Um, 
Trey Palmer, another sort of Raz man. Very kind of spotty hands, but like take a top off speed. Uh, he's going to have to learn to play receiver at the next level, though. Nebraska doesn't exactly like train good receivers. A.T. Perry is still on the board. How did you not bring him up? I guess he's not fast, but like he's not slow either. Well, I, yeah, I just I didn't bring him up because uh, I, I want to draft him. No, I'm just um, <laughs> no. Uh, it's just I mean, he ran like what? That's an 82nd percentile. No, I just didn't bring him up because he wasn't the very top Raz guy, and he wasn't a guy I watched a lot. So between like the I watched like Wicks and stuff more, but I also didn't watch many of these guys very much at all. Like I watched a game cut up of Wicks, and I watched maybe a couple of quarters of Perry. Because it just wasn't what I was going to be looking for here okay. in this. Um, so, that's why I didn't bring him up. <laughs> yeah, AT, somebody, somebody called him like a jump ball merchant, and they, I guess they assumed that that was like a bad thing. <laughs> like, this is the fourth round, bro. You get a jump ball merchant in the fourth round, like, you just got something out of a fourth round pick. Good luck. Um, another one that's up here right now is uh, the dude out of... Ah, Michigan State. Jaden Reed. He didn't get drafted yet, I don't think. Mm -hmm. uh, Jaden Reed. That one's wild. Right. He's good. Uh, Jaden Reed, great hands. Very similar to Josh Downs uh, when I watched him. Yep. Uh, um, very professional receiver. He's a smaller outside receiver, which means you can convert him to the slot. Just very, very decent NFL like caliber receiver. A um, little bit further down, um, Justin Shorter. Wish he were taller. Uh, caught some passes <laughs> caught some passes from our boy uh, Anthony Richardson um, he's got some nuances he needs to pick up but like it's not terrible uh, Jadakiss Bonds who among us has not named at least one of our sons after a mid 90's obscure rapper from the east coast I mean I know I have for sure I, I've got at least two <laughs> All right, uh, so I guess we're pretty much done with the receiver. Let's move on to tight end. Yep, tight end. Uh, I, I don't have much that you didn't give me okay. uh, here. <laughs> so I'm not going to steal your thunder because you've already talked about this person, yeah. and I am very surprised that he is still sitting here. So I will, I'll give you the floor to talk about the guy again. Don't make me talk about Schoonmaker. I can't believe he's still here either. He's not going to be here when I pick. I pick like 11th or something like that, and somebody's going to take that's like one of my guys. Uh, Scooney, absolutely phenomenal blocker, good mover, uh, really, really impressive tape. Not a lot of production, but like Michigan just didn't like throw to him a lot. I don't, I don't think it's because he's bad. I think it's largely simply because like they had better things to do with the football most of the time. I would like to. Think or their quarterback is. sucks, so they couldn't do much. So that, that might be it too. I didn't watch a ton of Michigan last year, but like on the tape, they just didn't throw to him. He was wide open a lot. Very, very good mover. He doesn't move like he's six foot four and change. Uh, high Raz guy. Great, great. Uh, it's just like his fucking blocking is so much goddamn fun. Like, how do you not like a dude that just locks onto a defensive end and drives him back? Ugh, love it. Uh, wish I could get him. I doubt I will. A little bit further down, you've got Cameron Latu. I think who's a he was a linebacker converted to tight end, and he sort of plays like it. Decent blocker, okay hands, good mover, decent player, does a job. Uh, I think he's probably going to be like somebody's tight end too later on in the NFL. I don't know if he's ever going to make it like as a stud. Will Mallory uh, coming out of tight end U. That is the University of Miami. Um, Will Mallory tested really well. I had a, h a tough time getting my hands on any of his, like, all-22 tape. Like, they only have anything from him from, like, 2020, even still. Uh, so I can't really say that I watched him much. Payne Durham, when you absolutely, positively don't give a fuck if your tight end blocks. Except, <laughs> <laughs> like, he's a good receiver. He's a good receiver. But... I, I turned off the tape the first time I saw him like pick up a blitz from a linebacker and just get shoved into the dirt. So I have one tight end that I watched that right. I want to bring up here. Please. I I was looking. I you know I was just you know nice guy. I read a lot. You know listen a lot. And I was reading and I cannot remember where it's from. So I'm not 100 percent sure who to give credit for this. But I saw a comp for this player, and it was a literal moose. Noah Gindor out of North Dakota State 
He is six six, and runs like a like me like just really stridey and like just very large looking. Like he, he looks larger than he, he looks like a seven footer running around out there. And I, so I didn't watch a ton of him. I'm not really sure that he's gonna be able to translate. But he is. I think if you want to go watch some hot, like go try to find some no Gendor highlights. Just kind of like watch him move. It's really great. Like I'll draft him <laughs> just because he moves awesome. So that's that's my analysis here on the tight ends is that Gindor, literal moose comp works. That's a great comp. So good job to that guy. He nailed it. <laughs> is can I find anything on like new? Like did he test at all? Uh, no, he didn't test at all except for he uh, put up 16 reps on the bench. But he has 34 inch arms, so it's kind of tough to put up a good bench. But he's six six, two sixty three. Um, I mean big and he does I mean he does move like reasonably well like I wouldn't expect him to be able to turn great but like I mean we're talking about like over routes and stuff like that or seam you know, up the seam that sort of route combination he can do um and he's big so I, I think there's a role for him at the NFL level his hands look pretty good but again I have not watched a ton of him because I only watched enough to get the like yeah <laughs> the, the moves vibes are good um, but I do think, like, this lumbering runner, like, he was very tough to bring down at NDSU, and I think, to an extent, he's going to be very tough to bring down at the NFL level. Um, so I'm not pro- – I mean, he's probably not likely to get a ton of opportunities because he's probably a seventh-round pick at best, especially not testing. But he is very fun if you want to try to find, like, a couple-minute highlight of him and watch because it's a good time. <laughs> uh, that is a deep cut from me uh, or from you. I'm fantastic. Nice. Uh, I try. Noah Gindorf. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and move on to tackles. What do we have left that you care about? Um, I like Tyler Steve. Kind of the, like, uh, you know, I feel like he moves pretty well. I'm going to look up his uh, Razz. He does um, move really well, actually, um, yeah. Yeah, I feel like he moves really well, and I like a tackle at this range that moves well. I think his pass blocking technique is a mess. Uh, to an extent, um, but I think that if you move as well as he does, I think you could potentially coach him to be competent at that. Now, I do believe Alabama is, I, I trust that they coach up pretty well. So the fact he hasn't picked it up yet is a concern, but that's why he's here because a guy who moves as well as he does really probably shouldn't be here still. So um, as far as like a you know movement-based kind of traits, upside pick, I think you could do a lot worse than Tyler Steen here. I actually expect him to already go because of those things. I mean, his agility is 85th percentile despite being 80th percentile in weight. Like, he's a big dude who moves pretty well. Arms are a little small, so that's another concern. But even if he does, you know, end up playing a more of a, you know, zone, you know, outside zone scheme guard, like the movement skills are going to translate in there. So I feel pretty good about him playing a sort of swing lineman role at the next level just because he moves so well that it's going to be tough to get him absolutely you know dominated wherever you put him uh i actually see him like specifically as getting kicked in as a guard uh he seems like a a a really good fit for a team looking to tackle guard uh convert just like you said inside or outside zone uh his ability to move is fantastic I, i i he did uh he did a really decent job, often, of mirroring um, defensive ends. It just, there is something wrong with his technique. And I'm not an offensive line coach, but, like, it just looked wonky. That's my, that's my diagnosis. He, he's, yeah. He's wonky. I think with the wonkiness, I don't think it could just, like, absolutely not work. The reason why I didn't necessarily just say he was a guard outright is because I do think he probably provides more value if you can like have him be like a four spot backup like the sixth offensive line that steps in basically everywhere but the center like i think that's probably the role i want him in because i feel like if you put him oh specifically a tackle if he is the guy who's your starting right tackle like he's gonna get picked apart matchup wise mm-hmm. so i think you want him kind of being that swing guy but if he's your starting guard in like your emergency tackle, like I think that's a good role for him too. He is definitely better at guard than he is at tackle, but I think he can he can survive at tackle. So I think there's just there's some more upside as the 
guy who kind of does everything for your line, but not everything great, just everything like passable. You need that. I see a lot of love being given to Wanya Morris. The guy that played opposite Anton Harris. Uh, excellent Raz. High 80s in uh, 40 yard, uh, in his 40 yard split. Um, or as far as his 40 yard dash, his 10 yard split was reasonable, 20 yard split was a little bit better. So uh, I, there's just a lot of love for him right now, right now out there. 35 inch long arms. Six five three zero seven. I think he could stick a tackle. I think he's going to take a little bit of work, but like coming out of those, uh, we've seen now enough tackles come out of those uh, those spread offenses, and immediately transition to being very very good pass blockers. That I could see somebody taking Wanya in the fourth round IRL or in this league and getting themselves a starter sooner than later. Uh, we saw it with, like, Abe Lucas last year. Um, sometimes you come out of these systems and, like, you're actually more prepared than, than, than traditional scouts saw coming. I liked Abe Lucas last year, and I don't like him as much to start right away, but he has the tools you're looking for when you're trying to get a tackle going. Mm -hmm. He moves well. I'd like him to have moved a little quicker to start, and I would like to have seen his agilities, um, but... Sometimes the guy's not doing agilities is almost random. It doesn't mean he's bad at him. It's just kind of like, you know, it is what it is. I think he moves well. Um, but I do think uh, I, Steen and Wanya were guys that I kind of expected to be in similar ranges. Either they'd go back to back in the third, so, you know, a little bit of a reach, or they'd fall to here, which is a little bit better value. If I was looking for a guy to fill a role today, I would like Steen a little better. But I do think Wanya, like you said, is probably going to be much quicker to get like a better tackle. You know, early on, I just would say if there's one guy that I expect to flame out, out like all the way, if I had to put money on it, it'd be Wanya. I just I'm not exactly sure why I think that because I don't think Wanya is really as bad. But like between the two of them comparing it, I like Steen to play a versatile sixth offensive lineman role better than I like Wanya to play a. I guess we have to play our backup tackle today role. Like, at worst. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, anybody else that you want to bring up? Um, I've seen... So, some names that I've seen a lot of, like, hype for. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen I've seen a good bit of Warren McClendon uh, hype kind of going around. People thinking that he should maybe be a lot higher than where he's ranked. I'm not exactly sure where consensus got him right now. This board has a 163. I've seen some people saying that they should take him in the... you know kind of the swing between third day two and day three but i think that's a little bit of this tackle class being not very good uh that we're just trying to find guys we like back in here um i i see the warren mcclendon's like as helmet scouting like just watching enough georgia tape he just didn't yeah um so that's yeah that's a guy that i not necessarily in on all the way but i've seen a lot of people talking about him um, and um, a guy who I've not watched any of, but put up a huge razz, Jake Witt, out of uh, South Dakota State. Let me look. I was just I was just looking at it, and then I went away to look at Wanya. Um, Northern Michigan, nine point eight razz. Yeah. Um, I don't. I haven't watched him. Uh, didn't get to my Northern Michigan tape this at this point. Um, but he's six seven. 33 and a half inch arms elite speed explosion great agilities uh that's how you get there um he's a little light but you know the move guys usually are a little bit light um put up better you know a better percentile bench than he is you know his weight wise so hey listen physical tools i haven't watched him play so i don't know i haven't i also have not heard anything about this guy this guy was not on my radar until i saw his testing numbers so I'm guessing he's pretty rough. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's but... uh, he's one of those tight end converts. Oh, nice! I should never mind. I have to draft him now. I love these tight end converts. <laughs> uh, a lot of those guys, like Blake Freeland, um, another guy I'm about to bring up, uh, Nick Saldaveri, were later uh, tight end converts that are just sort of learning the position among the tight end converts that happen to be like super freak athletes. 
Um, Saldaveri is the one that I like the most, above Freeland even. Um, his technique was uh, in the past game was very solid. Um, he took on bull rushers better, in my opinion, than Blake Freeland. Um, still, you're getting like this super high, you know, six foot six, three hundred and eighteen pounds. Uh, Forty was reasonable, but his ten yard split is in the ninety seven percentile. Thirty one. Yeah, I mean, lips. I. I don't care about how fast the guy runs 40 yards. I care about how fast he runs 10. Yeah. Like, <laughs> off the line, like, they're not asked to run 40 very often. Yeah. Like, Salvador um, is a guy that I liked a lot on tape. Uh, guys that I also liked on tape that are a little bit lower. Um, this is one of the dudes I made one of my, one of my uh, short videos on, uh, Killian Zyre. For some reason, like... I, I guess because Auburn was god awful last year, and he's a little bit older. Uh, he's a player that came came from Germany. Um, six foot six. Relative of letter score was fine. He was not invited to the combine, but he looked fantastic at Shrine. So he is yes, yeah, sorry, six foot seven, thirty four and a quarter inch arms. A uh, ten-yard split of one eight two puts him in the sixty-second percentile. Um, just looks like an athlete out there. Uh, prospect that I like a lot. I think he's probably going to go undrafted in this league. I think he's probably going to be a sixth or seventh round pick in the NFL uh, or a priority free agent for somebody as a developmental tackle. He's a little bit older. I think he's twenty-three or twenty-four years old already. But he's not as old as, like, Bernhard Ryman, who I think was 25 when he was drafted in 26 his rookie year. Um, he's somebody that I like a lot. Uh, besides that, I mean, it's just sort of a pick em. Like, Saidi So had an incredible... Um, let me see. Saidi So had an absolutely fantastic uh, RAS, 97 percentile. So we're looking at a guy with... Uh, 6'4", 323, and ran a 40 in 5.07 seconds. Good for 92nd percentile. 33 and a half inch long arms. Everything else was fantastic. Vertical of 32 inches, broad of 9.31. Uh, again, at 323 pounds. Eastern Michigan, you know, maybe he's good, maybe he's not, but you bet on the athletes at this point. Yeah, I mean, that's... Tackle is one of those positions as well that's, like, a lot of, like, just taking athletes, you know. Mm -hmm. You want to bet on the traits and hope you can coach them up to a degree. For sure. Um, but let's move on to mm -hmm. the interior offensive line. I don't really have too many to talk about here either. Okay. Um, there's – we talked about one already, Voorhees. We talked about him last time. This is – he's going to go somewhere in these, and someone's going to be very happy they did after they wait a year. So I'm excited to see who's going to be the one to take him. Um, but the guy I want to talk about, Antonio Maffi, he's just a nasty dude. He's a nose tackle convert, playing guard, just a mammoth of a man. And I, I mean, listen, I, I can get behind a mammoth of a man guard any day of the week. I'm trying to find his Raz right now, but I'm guessing he didn't nose test. tackle con. He didn't test. Okay, I was like, nose tackle convert, probably not the most athletic dude, but that's okay because he doesn't win with athleticism. He wins by being very mean and running through you. So I'm um, just so at least gonna get to his size if it'll if I can get there. He is um, six two three forty. Three thirty eight. Yep. Three thirty eight. Yep. You you love to see it. So the nose tackle guy, uh, you know, big hands, big strong hands. He hits you like a pound of brick. You know, a ton of bricks right there on you. Um, I think that he is just a, one of the people mover types. Um, we've seen a lot of these late round guards that really all they do is move people, be very productive pros. And I think he is kind of the next in that lineage to be a solid guard for you. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, I'll expand on it. Antonio uh, Maffei, who's one of the first uh, prospects that I saw at Shrine. Uh, he and mm -hmm. his, he had two teammates that were also at Shrine. Um, the other one was John Gaines, uh, who had an absolutely bonkers combine. Um, and the other one was Raekwon O'Neal. 
Shrine is held out in Vegas, so they filled up with UCLA players, uh, including uh, DTR. So, yeah, I was going to say DTR was there too. So, um, Mafi is a lot more athletic than you're giving him credit for. I know that he didn't test, but that dude, uh, UCLA ran an inside zone system, and like they pulled Mafi and Gaines over and over and over again to open up space for Charbonnet. Part of the reason why Charbonnet was as incredibly productive as he was was they were just beating the crap out of they, they, they UCLA is going to have more players drafted on their offense this year than Alabama. Just, just think about yeah. that. Like, they're going to have three offensive linemen taken. They're going to have a wide receiver taken. They're going to have uh, their uh, a quarterback taken. Like... They, they, they were an incredibly talented team last year. Um, so, yeah, uh, Antonio Maffi, uh, Raekwon O'Neal, and, uh, and John Gaines, all three of them from UCLA, all three of them people movers, all three of them uh, should be on somebody's list later on. I'm going to bring up another guy, Jalen Daniels, out of Utah. Crazy athlete. Absolutely crazy athlete, Braden Daniels. Um... 95th percentile uh, RAS, like shuttle 4.6, 40 yard dash 499 at three at 294 pounds, six foot three. Um, can't say as I watched a ton of tape on him, but that athleticism is so raw. Uh, any others? Uh, already taken a few of them. Uh, Ricky Stromberg's already off the board. Yeah, I did not think he was going to fall to the day three. I thought for sure he was. I mean, he he made too many people look really weak on the inside of the SEC to, for him not to go. I, I would have been surprised if he was still here to talk about. They have Earl Bostic listed as an IOL, but he's really a tackle only. Uh, if he doesn't make it as a tackle, he's, he, he's, he's one of those dudes that like just has super long legs. Uh, yeah. And like he's, he's never going to just – you kind of need to be like thicker in the middle to be a guard in the NFL. You're holding up against guys that are just too strong to be able to be top-heavy. Um, okay, so before we move on to defense, mm-hmm. do you want to predict how where Andrew Voorhees is going to go? What pick range are you thinking? He's not leaving the fourth round. Gotcha. That's, I mean, that's about where I'm thinking, too. I think he's going to be a top 140 guy. Uh, if, um, if he hadn't uh, torn his ACL, he would have been probably in the third round. I loved his tape. Absolutely, just I loved his tape. Yep, I mean I I'm on board 100. percent I was just curious to see because the injury adjustment is always interesting. Like how far are these guys going to go when they can't play? But uh, I think yeah, fourth round pick on the offensive line. If you're expecting them to play, um, I worry for your quarterback. Uh, in general, like if they earn the spot, then go ahead. But if you were like, I need this guy to play guard for me, um, okay. Uh, but yeah, I think fourth is definitely fair value for him uh, mm-hmm. with the injury adjustment, and I think it's gonna look like a steal in three years because the injury adjust. You know, you know, you miss the first year, but nobody even really plays the first year anyway. So you're like, I mean, what did you lose? I mean, you draft him and you have a free uh, free roster spot. He's he's on IR. Hmm. Exactly. Even better. There's some benefits to that even with the, the redshirt year. Um, but let's move on to defense. Uh, I'm just going to – let's just talk about defensive line kind of as a group. So mm-hmm. edge and interior together. Uh, Carl Brooks. I'm shocked he's still here. So I think he's the guy that didn't get the combine invite, right? I have he no idea. His, I think because he's a Bowling Green guy that didn't get the combine invite after just absolutely dominating the senior bowl. And everyone was like, what's the deal with this? Uh, I'm pretty sure that's him. I can't remember now, of course, um, being as far out as we are from when that happened. But he just, I mean, I think he played a little, like, on the edge, too, for some of that stuff, if I remember him right from the Senior Bowl. But he just won all the time at the Senior Bowl. And I think you have some of the level competition stuff. But on tape, he just, I mean, he just wasn't able to be blocked. And... Here in the fourth, uh, actually, I just figured he'd go because of the hype around him. I'm trying to find his Raz here, see if he did it as pro day. Uh, yeah, it was. Um, it didn't turn out great. He has a, a Raz of five point eight seven. Gotcha. There he is. Yeah, pretty sure this is him though. Ah, dang that agility. 
that shuttle is rough. But, I mean, you're not asking a guy to turn around. But, yeah, I mean, the arm length is a concern. Um, and, you know, he's just, he's not like a killer athlete by any means. But he looked, I mean, it was tough to block him uh, against really good athletes at guard. And even, well, with other really good athletes on the defensive line going up against these guys. And he stood out at the Senior Bowl. And a lot of these Senior Bowl standouts um, get drafted highly by these NFL teams. They value the Senior Bowl and how you play in those one-on-ones. Um, I think he, I mean, the competition stuff's kind of hard to go, but I didn't see any issues of him standing up to double teams inside. Um, you know, again, you're going to get blocked by a lot stronger dudes in the next level, but I think I'd expect him to be able to hold his gap, and I think the pass rushing upside is pretty clear with him. So I like him. Kind of, I mean, I expect him to go early. I wouldn't expect him to be here at my pick even, uh, personally, but these interior defensive linemen have been a little bit weirder for me than I thought they'd be. Uh, Kind of, I feel like they fell a little further than I expected, uh, kind of in our draft so far. So maybe that changes, but he's a guy I like. What do you got? Uh, I'm going to bring up one of my absolute favorites, uh, again from Shrine, Keandre Coburn. Uh, he mm-hmm. played right next to Moro Ajomo, Ajomo at, uh, at Texas. Ajomo played more the three tech, and he played more than one. Uh, Coburn is a fine athlete, but I mean, he tests basically in the same place that like most of these uh, these one techs uh, tend to test, which is like, what's it called? Three Just trying to pull up this testing right now. Uh, yeah, he's a he's a traditional one tech. He actually tested better than some of the other ones at 61336. Uh, 5.2 Raz, which at defensive tackle for that size is actually really, really strong. When you compare him to like a Siaki Ika, who's almost the exact same size but tested with like a 1.29 Raz or something like that. Uh, fairly powerful, uh, good, uh, good movement uh, in terms of like uh, being laterally aware to cover two block or to t- cover two gaps. Uh, he's there. Um, just going to be like a solid like run stuffing nose tackle at the next level. Uh, his arm length again is a little bit of a concern. Uh, 31 and a half, which is, you know, it's, it's not great for that size, but I don't care that much. Like arm length is for offense. Um, another guy that I would bring up, I guess, uh, I really like Dante Stills. Uh, at a West Virginia defensive interior rusher, five tech sort, sort of. Testing was not bad, but not incredible. 8.6 RAS score, slightly better arm length with 32 inches, 6'3, 286. Very explosive dude. Uh, sort of like you're going to be your poor man's Moro Jomo from this draft. Like, I was hoping to get one of the two of them, and now that Moro Jomo is off the board with the very last pick of the third round, no, I'm not salty. <laughs> uh, don't sound, you don't sound it, buddy. You not got at it. all, not at all. Um, who else? PJ Mustafer. Uh, you were just talking about Ricky Stromberg, but like PJ Mustafer at Shrine beat the holy shit out of him. Like, yes. He, that... made, he made me lose respect in the practices. Ricky Stromberg for what he did. Not 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 nearly as big of a beating as he put on uh, Juice Scrubs, but like I was astounded by just like how powerful that dude is. Um, he's strong. So, you got anybody else you want to bring up? Uh, we also um, go ahead. Cool. Yeah, um, I have. So I had a, a thing, and I watched a lot of these guys because of it, um, because I was watching the other side. Ali Gay. From LSU, yeah, uh, production was at best inconsistent. Yeah, but he's got the size, he's got the arm length. He showed that he can do it. He's got to get stronger at the next level. He's an older prospect as well. But the further down the board you get, the less I'm scared of the age, because like, listen, you aren't expecting a second contract out of these guys anyway, and like, you're just wanting him to be able to fill a role. And I feel pretty good about his potential to slide in and give some pass rushing upside. I'm seeing him in the 300s, in the 400s. Like, not even priority UDFA stuff right now. And, like, I think you, you should draft him. 
Like, I think he should be drafted. Because he's got enough physical tools to uh, produce at the NFL level, even if he didn't do it at college. Because, let's face it, that LSU defense, an LSU team, has been an absolute mess for a majority of his career now. It's really tough to blame him for not being consistent when nothing around him has made any sense. I mean, I got, um, I got the same vibes off of, like, B.J. O'Jolari. Like, this dude should be yeah. more productive, but, like, that program sucks. Yeah, so it's it's a mess. It's really tough to blame him for his lack of production. It obviously has hurt him because, realistically, I do think he should have been around here. I think if he would have tested, he might have been able to get some of that hype back. I'm not exactly sure why he didn't test. I have not. It's not like I'm, like, you know, scouted super deep into him. It was I was looking at Ojolari and saw enough of him to feel pretty all right about where he was, like, you should draft him. Yeah. Um, and so that, I mean, that's what it is. Older prospect, but has the tools. I mean, I feel pretty good about putting him in to be a depth pass rusher, basically. Because I don't feel great about him being like, it's not like he fits into the early down run defense role, because I don't think that he's strong enough for that yet. He has the frame for it, but I don't think he's strong enough for that yet. But, you know, injuries happen. You need a guy to slide in to rush the passer a little bit. I think he is more than capable of doing that role for you. And that's better than a lot of guys that make rosters. Do you have a favorite Byron Young? Yes, I like the Byron Young that went to Alabama. Damn it, Uh, I like that one too. Yeah, I I like moving him inside, uh, playing the kind of like the sort of like the hybrid between I mean they had him playing the five tech classic you know Alabama five tech mm-hmm. stuff um I think he can slide in as far as the three tech too um I just think he takes on blocks really well I, I like the way he uses his hands as he's approaching it feels very refined and solid in that regard so I feel pretty good about him uh providing a little bit of pass rushing upside from that position and I didn't see him get blown up in the SEC at all so as far as holding up as a three tech, I feel very comfortable with him in this range being a very productive rotational role player for you. I completely um, agree. I, I he popped out uh, on the tape when I watched him. Uh, I I liked him playing three tech a lot. I liked he, he's a very professional defensive end. Is this the best way I could put it? Like there was nothing like he didn't just beat the shit out of people like Quinn and Williams or uh, or. Jalen Carter, where like it's so obvious this is the best player on the field uh, as an interior defensive lineman, but like he just did everything really kind of well uh, in terms of like holding up against the run, in terms of like a quick move right off the snap, just getting into the backfield. Like he did some cool shit. Uh, so like Byron Young out of Alabama is my favorite Byron Young at this draft. I'm actually surprised that both of the Byron Youngs are still here just because of the Byron Young Tennessee, like day three hype that I've seen. But yeah, I would take Byron Young Alabama over Byron Young Tennessee, um, just to, the role that I was expecting to play. Do you want to talk? Um, do you want to talk a little bit about Byron Young Tennessee? Um, no. <laughs> um, <I> think, <laughs> he's the Raz man. We have to talk a little bit about him, though. He is the he is the Raz man. Um, I. Listen, I'm not, like, a hater of Byron Young, Tennessee. Um, the physical tools on the edge play. Like, it's, I think that he can translate to the next level and play a productive pass rushing role on the edge. So, whereas Byron Young, Alabama, I think is going to be the inside of them. I think that you could put Byron Young, Tennessee on the edge and expect him to kind of bend the corner and get some pressures. But I think it's going to be more in the mold of what we saw from Max Crosby the first year where it's kind of just athleticism getting around the corner and like he had some lucky sack production that year. Max Crosby turned into a complete pass rusher. I'm not sure I'm envisioning that from Byron Young, Tennessee, but if you only have rookie Max Crosby from Byron Young, Tennessee, like that's a good fourth round pick. Max Crosby at that range was overrated at that, at that time, but like, if you can get, like, just the bend in the edge, the cheap pressures, mm-hmm. unquote, like, you're just moving the guy off the spot, and, like, maybe he fell into your lap and you got the sack, but, like, it's really just you're making a move. That is still valuable, and we're talking about day three here. So I, I don't hate him. I just, uh, I like the more functional role that the Alabama guy plays. Uh, as 
I mean, I watched both Byron Youngs, uh, just because, just for the memes. Um, Byron Young, Tennessee, I was kind of disappointed because I didn't feel like the athleticism played as much as, like, it should have. Like, mm-hmm. you, uh, like, you list him, you put him as RAS at linebacker, and it's a 9.94. Nolan Smith is a 10. This guy is basically, like, the closest thing you'll find in this draft to Nolan Smith in the third round. And the, I saw very little of him dominating like he should have. He doesn't have With to- that speed, mm-hmm. against some of the tackles he went against, he should have put up more production just by running around the corner. His three cones, pretty solid too. Like He should have had more production. So there is like a, listen, like there's there needed to have been more there, but like I still feel like he can do, you know, I mean, what are we talking like? A rotational like thirty pressure guy. Yeah, I like mean, I think he can do that. If he's just doing that, then, then that's exactly what it should be. Uh, Brenton Cox, I'm going to bring this guy up. Great name. Uh, Brenton Cox was another guy that popped out on Shrine for me. Technician, not nearly, not nearly the athlete of some of the guys that have gone above him, but uh, at Shrine on one on ones, he whooped the shit out of some tackles. Like, that is a dude that looked like he could play some football at the next level. Now, my concern with him is that he didn't test crazy athletically. Uh, I do wonder... That's the biggest thing, I think, with with, with pass pass rushers in general, is that so few of them don't test incredibly well. But Brenton Cox had that 1.6 10-yard split that the elite rushers need to have. He doesn't have anything else green, but a 1.62 10-yard split is where those elite guys are. Yeah, if I have to pick two things to ever have green, if, if they're you know bad or okay at everything else, but I need two things to be green, three cone, 10-yard split. The only one of those is still, you know, you have a role. But, like, yeah, if you do those two things, like, I can, you know, feel all right about you. If you do one of them, I can still, like, see it coming. So um, he's got a slightly better res than uh, Andre Carter, despite not being hugely tall. But, yeah, I think you give him, you know, decent explosiveness in the good 10-yard split, deep, long enough arms. Yeah, he can do it. I agree. And, the, obviously, the technique is a big thing, too. If you're not going to be a crazy athlete, you have to be sound and have a plan. And I think he is sound and has a plan and gets there quick. Perfect. I'm all in. Uh, and I think that's about... I mean, there's some more guys on here, but I don't want to like drag this out forever. Obviously, you've got your Jose Ramirez. Uh, yeah, great great third baseman, quick hands, um, you know, MLB pro for the last couple years. You know, really good guy. Uh, easily, top 10, easily top 10 player. Do you know anything about Tavius Robinson? I do not know anything about Tavius Robinson. Okay. Uh, I just, I I keep seeing his name pop up in different places. Uh, He tested very well out of uh, Ole Miss. 1.58 10-yard split. Ooh. Six foot six, 33 and seven, or 33 and three quarters length arms. Again, I haven't watched this dude on tape, but like, those are some interesting physical characteristics. Um, I see a lot of people talk about Caleb Murphy at a Ferris State, like 25 sacks last year, like beating up on gym teachers. There might be something there. Uh, and one of my absolute favorites in this draft class, I'll give him up right now, BJ Thompson. Yep. Uh, do you want to talk about BJ? Because I'll talk about No, you, you, you can talk about BJ. I'll, I'll, I won't steal the BJ from you. All right. BJ Thompson is a guy that uh, popped up again on, like, Shrine. Um, I'm going to keep bringing up Shrine. I'm going to pound the table because I'm not. I'm just an amateur. I'm just a dude. But they gave me access to their practice tape. I've seen all of the Shrine Bowl practice tape. I've seen all of their one-on-ones. I've seen all their ta- their team drills. I've seen all the running backs, the receivers, the tight ends, everything. B.J. Thompson looked like a puma pouncing on house cats most of that 
uh, most of that uh, those practices. Like he, they put him in in attack or attacking running backs, and he just like almost leaped over one of them. They put him against tight ends. He beat them up. He was faster than all of the tackles that they had, and they had some really good athletes to tackle. Um, I I. I get the concerns with him having gone to like Stephen F. Austin, but like, didn't they have a guy get drafted a couple years ago? I feel they? like they had a, de- a defensive lineman drafted a couple years ago. I have to look, but the names, the, like the Stephen F. Austin pass rusher, it's like I want to say two years ago they had a guy. I'll look it up and I'll probably say it in general or something right after this. All right, but yeah, um, one five eight ten yard split. 34 and a half inch long arms. Three cone, 8.75. Like, Jesus. This dude is, and he's six foot six. Six five and a half. All right, let's move on. All right. Because we could be here all day. We've got, let's just do our back, you know, linebacker corner safety to round us off here. All right. So, kind of an open group. Do you want to start us off? Uh, DeMarvian Overshone converted safety popped out to me uh, watching Texas tape. Uh, just he can get to the ball. Like, put a good, put the ball in front of him, let him run after it. Uh, he's going to get you similar like to De- Diane Henley, a little bit uh, a little bit slower, not quite as fast. But, like, right now we're just taking shots, so give it a shot. Go ahead. Uh, Ventro Miller, uh, Florida guy. Ooh, uh, I like him. I like his tape. Pretty, yeah, I mean, great tape, honestly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like he, I think he put up a pretty decent razz. I'm trying to pull it up right now. Um, I feel like, I mean, I don't think he was necessarily the craziest athlete, but I think he was pretty good, and he was the undisputed leader of that defense. It wasn't a great defense necessarily, but being the leader of the defense in the way that he was is very impressive still. Um, it, it will translate. I mean, leadership is one of the biggest things linebackers do, and I feel very good about him translating that to be the leader of a group if it came to that at the next level let's see if i can find him i didn't think he was going to be the best i think i thought he was going to be above he didn't test at all there's okay well there it is okay i I expected him to be somewhere in the let's see what am i thinking here i expect him to be better than toho too so probably in like the seven and a half range as kind of what I was thinking Mm -hmm. so maybe not the craziest athlete but I mean leadership and very sound I don't think he falls for play action and in today's NFL that's one of the bigger things you can do is staying home to play action and not getting absolutely torched so good about him Uh, he's a guy that I that I very much falls in the territory of a professional linebacker Uh, he just looks like a linebacker plays like a linebacker moves downhill gets off of blocks that's all the old school kind of linebackery things Uh, I didn't see him as much in coverage but like uh, you know maybe it works Uh, guy that I want to point out Yasser Abdullah he falls more into the edge category, super athletic, crazy rangy, played opposite uh, Yaya Diaby. Tate isn't unbelievable, but god damn it is he fast. Like, And he comes downhill so quickly. Uh, he's going to be your outside linebacker. He's going to be uh, your, your pass rushing speed end. But like, he does some cool stuff on tape, and you can't teach that kind of speed. Definitely. Um, next guy I'm going to bring up, Kayubu Kelly the senior bowl darling of the corner group. Uh, I feel like the corners did actually pretty well overall in the senior bowl, which is kind of weird because I feel like this, the people who were there, I didn't feel very highly of going in, but uh, Kelly is like, he didn't rise as much as I thought he was. He's in this range. I'd be pretty surprised based off that performance. Uh, if he doesn't end up in the fourth, I have not looked at his testing and I'm wondering if, that's the reason he is as low as he's been consensus wise still despite how well he played um i'm pulling it up now because if he's still good at testing then like why is he not higher you know what i mean Mm -hmm. because like i mean it's these those are slanted against the corners if you're playing good as a corner in those drills like that's that's isolated coverage right there you're not going to do that very often but like yeah, he's not in the first three pages, so I'm guessing it is either he didn't test. No, he tested. He or eight seven five res. Oh, did I miss him then? Uh, he's just not fast. That well, I mean, not not expected. 
I was seeing him as like a, he's, he's a little smaller, isn't he? Or is that, I think it's somebody else. Six foot, 190. Six foot, that's no, not too bad. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Why? I think that yeah. he, uh, the I, I saw a little bit of his tape. He got cooked by Jordan Addison, and that made me think Jordan Addison was fast. Now seeing his 40, 4, 5, 2, I understand why Jordan Addison, Addison walked away from him. Uh, Hugh Blue's going to be a, he's going to be a, a slot, but I think he could be a really good slot. Yeah, I mean, slot, good slot, but I mean, nice size for a slot, too. I mean, exactly. we're talking about a guy who can play physical, handle that stuff. The shuttle's a little concerning, too. So I think on the outside, you're asking him to, so his 10-yard split and his bad shuttle, with his, with his lack of long speed, I think is a disastrous combination for him on the outside because he has to use his 10-yard split to stay over top of these guys because they're going to beat him with long speed, but he just can't stop. Like, <laughs> So it's weird that he was so good in the coverage guys, and that does say that he plays the game mentally very well. If he's handling, then I mean, those guys can do anything to him. Um, so I do feel like there is some version of a Kai Blue Kelly that is a boundary corner for you, but I think you'd rather use the short area quickness and you know the way he sees the receiver's routes inside where he is protected from his lack of long speed. He can play fast. And not have to worry about getting beat over the top. Uh, let me see. Is there anybody that I want to bring up from here? Honestly, uh, probably like uh, Cameron Mitchell at a Northwestern. Um, Mitchell, he was like everybody else that you'll ever see this year out of Northwestern. He was basically put in every situation he could to fail. Um, Watching his tape, uh, he's going to have some arm length issues. He's not particularly long. Uh, he's only 5'10", but one fi- or, uh, 1.53 10 yard split is in the 87th percentile. Very good uh, composite agility scores. Decent vertical. Um, Northwestern fucking moved him around from left to right, left to right, left to right, cover the slot, whatever. Dude, Like it was like the Adebowari tape except for a quarterback. Like They put him fucking everywhere to fail. And it wasn't like they were just matching out specifically. I watched him on the, the, the Ohio State tape, and I watched him on the Wisconsin tape just very recently. And I could not, like, figure out what they were doing with him. They literally put him everywhere, and it wasn't just, like, covering a single receiver all game long, like the like the Darrell Revis thing. It was just like, well, this player you're going to be here, this player you're going to be there, try to remember where you're supposed to line up, and then, like, figure it out on the field. Um, hell of an athlete, very good movement skills, excellent change of direction in space. I feel like if you just put him in a system that's not like abusing him, like taxing him mentally all the time, every single play, you're going to get yourself like at the very least a special teams contributor. And then later on in the next couple of years or so, you might actually wind up with like a halfway decent 77, 78 rated, uh, cornerback. Yep. Now I'm trying to figure out if I want to talk about any of these safeties. Uh-huh. Um, Jason Taylor too is I don't think the son of the Jason Taylor. Um, are you, do you have any inf- intel on that? None. Okay. I, I was thinking that he wasn't. I remember looking it up at one point, but now I can't remember the answer. So he may or may not be the son of the Jason Taylor. If he is, take him in the fourth. If he's not, then I don't know. Um, <laughs> um, uh, do I, I like any, I don't know. Um, I'm shocked that you're not going after your, you're not going after a Brett Coleman boy, Rashad Torrance. Oh, I, I got to watch more safety stuff from him apparently. Yeah. Talk about, talk about Brett Coleman boy, Rashad Torrance for me. All right. <laughs> Brett Coleman loves converted, uh, cornerbacks. Uh, Rashad Torrance supposedly plays like a converted uh, cornerback. That said, he had a f- at, at 5'11", 193, he had himself a 4.7240. Very good three cone. Very decent shuttle. So his change of direction is fine. But he's standing still a pretty long time. Um, I don't know. 
I would have talked about J- Daniel Scott, but he's off the board now. Absolute freak of an athlete. Uh, Brandon Joseph is somebody that I like. Converted, uh, sorry, transferred from Northwestern to Notre Dame. Uh, and then Notre Dame, like, I don't understand the purpose of transferring from Northwestern to Notre Dame because when he played at Notre Dame, he'd get, like, 25 snaps a game. Uh, got a lot of praise for being a very smart safety, always in the right spot, which is pretty much what you're looking for from a safety. His testing was fine. It was not Rashad Torrance level. Let me pull it up really quickly. Brandon Joseph. Um, uh, I was sworn he... Yeah, 6.47 RAS, 10-yard split, 8.77, or sorry, uh, 87 percentile, Um, 156. 6-foot, 202, will do everything that you're looking for from a safety. Very smart guy, probably a future coach. Uh, Safeties can sometimes get away with not being crazy athletic. the fact that he didn't get out of the rotation in Notre Dame is a little bit uh, concerning. But, again, we're talking about guys that are going to be pretty late in the draft. So, I liked him better than Jamie Robinson. I liked him better than J.L. Skinner. And, you know, I was never a fan of Jordan Battle. So, so I'm just looking at the Raz for the strong safety. Just see if there's someone I wanted to point out. Yeah. And Jordan Battle was the top Raz strong safety of this class at five point nine. <laughs> now some of that is like who they list at free safety versus strong safety. It seems like any athlete they put at free safety, but it is still funny that Jordan Battle is at the top of the Raz stuff for strong safety. <laughs> they just just because based off of where they put him. Jesus, that um, agility score! Holy crap! I mean, all of the safeties aren't really that athletic, though. I mean, we're talking about... Oh, I was on page two. That makes more sense. I was like, no way he's that bad. Yeah, okay. Daniel Scott, 994, the top. Uh, Willis Dalton out of Houston. I think he's still on the board, isn't he? Yes, he is. So he had a 9.42. Um, let's see here. Is there someone else I wanted to point out in the top here? Um... No. Daniel Scott. That dude is a freak. The one that that got away. Yeah, uh, he plays like a two. That's the worst thing about it. Like, he actually, like, plays up to his athleticism. He's 25 years old, though, so, like. Yeah, no. They had Sidney Brown at strong safety, 9.68. But then Jason Taylor, too. Oklahoma State, 8.91. There you go. Hold on, Jason. Hi. Is it, I mean, it's got to be one of the first questions when you pop up, right? Is Jason Taylor 2, Jason Taylor 1, son? Probably. Can, can you find that out for us? I'm working on it. Okay. Uh, Jason Taylor 2, while we're looking at it right now, we're talking about a 4-5 res, or a 4-5 uh, 40-yard dash, which for strong safety is pretty high. 204 pounds, which is about standard. 10-yard uh, split, though, of 9.95. 43 inch vertical loop. And then a 10-9 rod, which is good for 97 percentile. Yeah, son of Garland Taylor. Uh, it doesn't say anything. This is the Oklahoma State website, so it doesn't mention, you know, Jason. son of Hall of Famer Jason Taylor or related to Hall of Famer Jason Taylor. Is Jason so Taylor it does Hall not have... I think so. Maybe not. I don't, think I don't know. All very good, Jason Taylor. Yeah, Hall of well above average. Yes, Hall, Hall of he was guy he was all right. He was fun. <laughs> I I always remember uh, there was uh, this clip of like he he goes to 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 Meadowlands to the Meadowlands and like uh, he's stretching in the end zone and Jets fans are like pretty boy, pretty boy. Which is just what it's like to be a Jets fan. Yeah. Um. Oh, so um, this isn't. This might not have been exactly who uh, I was thinking of, but John Franklin Myers went to Stephen F. Austin. 
So oh. that might have been the guy I was thinking of. So we have, was, we have, a, jet, we have a, a Jets tie-in. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, 2018, John Franco Myers was their most recent draft pick in the fourth round. So that must have been who I was thinking of when I was thinking, yeah, that stands out, right? Like, that had to have been him. They have had a first-round pick in 1984, Todd Fowler. Good for them. Yeah, I mean, I feel like in the 80s, like, different universities had their runs, like uh, Loyola in basketball and, like, SMU in football. Uh-huh. And by the time until, I, S- until SMU got killed by uh, the NCAA. Yeah, they did. They got nerfed into the dirt. Um, the meadow, meadow is too good. Please <laughs> nerf. Uh, let me take a look. Are there any other safeties? I don't, I don't want to talk uh, Riley Moss. Draft them as a safety. Just draft them as a safety. What are you wasting your time for? Or draft him as a corner for the novelty. <laughs> <laughs> I think he can play corner, but it's like the cover three stuff, which is basically a safety anyway. When I tell you you need to play him like a safety at corner, then like you could also just play him as safety. <laughs> as as a cornerback, I mean just as a cornerback, we're talking about a nine point seven res. As a free safety though? We're looking at 9.42, so he gets worse. Yeah, I mean, because the, the weight adjusted. long speed stuff. Yeah, yeah weight adjusting stuff. Yeah. Still. Uh, yeah, draft him, draft him as a safety. He might be the best safety left. Or you can play him in the cover two stuff. I mean, he's good in the cover two. He, he'll be like all, the unders. He'll be all right in the cover two stuff. I just, anytime that like he's not looking at the ball, I worry. Yeah. In fairness, but, I mean, Riley most Moss, guys play. Riley Moss as a cornerback is a higher RAS than Randy Moss as a wide receiver. Yeah, I mean, that's just because Randy Moss is a fraud, I mean, clearly. Randy Moss, only a 33-inch vertical. This just in, the vertical's fake. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he just he was the one-foot jumper, so he doesn't, you know, he's not good for him. 35-inch uh, arms, he used every one of them. Yep, he, he really good at that. His thing was just that like, he obviously lost everybody, but he was so good at just not putting his hands up until the last second. You know, no one knew it was coming. Yeah, he he, he lost everyone. They, they they invented a word for him. Like, when was the last time a player like nobody ever said he, he got Lawrence tailored? Like that doesn't mean anything. You got Jason tailored, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty boy. <laughs> Way too handsome for his position. Yeah, he was, though. He was. He's the best. Jason Taylor was the most attractive football player of his generation. But then the Jets had, like, a good run of, like, attractive quarterbacks. Like, if you take Fitzpatrick out of it, we had, like... What do you mean? Mark Sanchez. Mark Sanchez was a very good-looking quarterback. Probably the best-looking quarterback of his generation. Excuse me? Yeah. What are are you, you, do you, do you taking have, taking Fitzpatrick out? Yes, I am. Ta- I'm taking Fitzpatrick out. Fitzpatrick listen, is listen. We gotta end, we gotta end this before I start doing something violent. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Sanchez is maybe the most attractive quarterback until Zach Wilson. Neither one of them could throw a pass, but like throw a pass at your chick, they could. Just <laughs> obvious. What? <laughs> all right let's go ahead all and right. leave it right there yeah um you know this is another draft primer that took us two hours to do actually not quite i think we got under two yeah we're at an so, hour and 33 minutes so that's like downright oof. speedy yeah honestly i mean we were really condensed and focused today Gosh, look at us go <laughs> um, it's also because you made me skip all the rest of my favorite edges yeah we yeah it's you made me go right if there's to the not, quarterback. If, there, if there's not 40 edges drafted, there's going to be like six UDFA signings each at edge. <laughs> That's the thing, though. There's just there's so many of them left. Like, there's so many. And RJ Carter is off the board. That's the best part of it. Yeah, it's it, everyone really slid up. <laughs> or slid back one on that one. <laughs> <For us. laughs> um, yeah, there's, there's just too many. There's too many. Uh, there's good linebackers left still. Uh, Anthony Orgy, you can go after Ivan Pace if you like him small. Marv, uh, Marte Mapu, uh, just take Ooh, Brett, Mapu, yeah. You just take Brett Coleman's word on it. You'll never find tape on him. 
<laughs> he might just, Sor he might just be fake. He might Sor just be fake. Let's let's look up his rash real quick because I was actually curious and I didn't see him on the list. He's not, uh, I don't think he tested. Did he not test? Oh my god, he really is a trust me, bro. I I'm serious. Like I do. You, I was looking for Sacramento State football tape. It doesn't exist. There's like one video or something like on YouTube. Ben Van Sumeren. You like Raz? You like Ben Van Sumeren. Yeah, Mapu did not test. <laughs> no, he didn't. He didn't. But look up Ben, yeah. look up ben Van Sumeren. Can't be that many Vans, right? No. And it's one word, too. Mission State. Ooh, nice. Very fast. Uh, he's probably a special teamers in like the real world, but holy rats can this dude run. And jump. And jump. Uh, yeah, there's just, there's, you know, I didn't even bring him up, but like, uh, Owen Papo. Uh, yeah, Papo. Yeah. He's on there. Muhammad was he, was he also a safety convert, or is I think it's somebody else? I think he, I, I, he's been at least a linebacker for two years now. Hmm. Um, yeah, Anthony Orgy. <laughs> Do with that name what you will. Ivan Pace. <laughs> <laughs> um, anybody else on this list? I don't know who Jeremy Banks is, but supposedly he's athletic. Well, that's good. Good for him. So yeah, there's there's gonna be infinite uh, infinite athletes at, at linebacker at edge. Just keep dropping that position forever. Uh, just stay away from the safeties and cornerbacks. There's nothing there. Eli Ricks, if you like him slow. So like here's that. something Go ahead. random tangent here. Yeah. One minute tangent before we end here. Mm -hmm. So looking at the Razzes, so they have their Raz at the time that they came out, and then their all-time Raz. Yeah. So like you know, just to compare their era and stuff, how on earth would somebody have a nine point nine eight Raz when they came out, but now all time they're ten point oh? How does that make sense? Brandon, Brandon Brooks. Brandon Brooks nine point nine eight Raz all time Raz ten. I don't understand how that's possible. That doesn't make any sense to me. Did someone like get eliminated from the pool before? I don't like you know. <laughs> I don't. I don't know, man. Uh, but the, his, that, his closest comp is like the OG God Steve Hutchinson. True. And then underneath him, like the new God Quentin Nelson. Yep. David Boss. David Boss was just... Oh, Boss is nasty. That dude was a killer as a center. If it's who I'm thinking of. No, he was a guard. Yeah, David Boss, an ab another absolute killer. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Like, the, the, the Raz thing is weird, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it'd be like that, I guess. Yeah, I suppose it is. Uh, but we can't draft Brendan Brooks. We can't draft David Boss or Steve Hutchinson. Watch me. Take me in the fourth round. I double dare you. <laughs> I'm bringing Brandon Brooks back. <laughs> <laughs> Make Brandon Brooks again. <laughs> Map off. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, you know, we'll be back on Saturday. Both of us will be on the you know, on the draft show. You know, he's going to be talking in depth about every prospect and saying stuff that you're like, oh my god, this guy watched every game he's ever played. He saw him play in middle school. And I'm going to be there saying like, yeah, I watched this guy. <laughs> or, no, I didn't. I, I don't know. <laughs> Coleman told me this. <laughs> <laughs> um, most of the time, I don't draft somebody just because of what Coleman says. I do watch him, but most Coleman will tell me. Coleman will tell me where to go sometimes. <laughs> when he gets a UDFA, it's just Brett Colby told, Coleman told me so. That's what that was Pacheco. <laughs> he told me to. <laughs> it worked out. It did. I mean, he knows ball sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, and with that, I think that's going to be the end of it. Uh, Mar or uh, Marte Mapu's a plant. <laughs>
But besides that, have yourselves a good evening and have a great draft. Happy drafting. Bye-bye.